I created uh, a great meatloaf for my dog. It's called Georgie Meatloaf. It's on YouTube right now. It's been on for seven years now. It's got over 320,000 views. Lots of replies from people about how great it is and how their dog was sick and, or ill or had diabetes. And Georgie Meatloaf really saved them. So uh, we're going to take you through um, kind of an express view of how to make Georgie Meatloaf again because a lot of people have asked me about the recipe. Well, there is no real recipe. Um, it's really, we put in everything that's good for the dog. We keep out anything that's not good for a dog. We don't put grapes in, we don't put raisins in, we don't put chocolate in. There's a list on the internet of what's good for your dog and what's not good for your dog. So it's easy to really find that information out, whether it be on our website where we have an article on our Impress website. It's ipaimpress.com. All you have to do is do a search for Georgie Meatloaf and it'll come up, the article. Uh, a couple of things or questions that we keep hearing over and over again over the years, so I want to clarify a few of them. Uh, one of them is we freeze Georgie meatloaf. When we're done, we, we cut them up in slices, we put wax paper in a plastic bag and in, in the freezer. We take out one piece a day, we throw it into the microwave just to defrost it or warm it up. We don't cook it in the microwave, we cook it in an oven. So it's not getting harmful rays from the microwave. Frankly, if you really believe that the microwave oven is killing people, then a million people would be dead and they would not make microwave ovens. So let's stop that misnomer about microwave being harmful. Fast cooking is better, keeps in the nutrients, so microwave cooking is not bad, it's actually good, okay? As far as uh, the old video, we used to top the uh, meatloaf pans with ketchup, all right? My mama used to make meatloaf and put some ketchup on the top, and it just is a glaze and nothing more. Everybody got crazy because they felt it had high fructose corn syrup in the tablespoon of ketchup that we put on a meatloaf that is getting sliced up into 12 servings. So it was ridiculous to begin with, but to stop all that chatter about how can I put ketchup <laughs> on the meatloaf, what we've done now is we now use canned tomatoes. We actually put it into the meatloaf. Georgie likes the taste of it. Uh, it's actually very good for dogs. And we top the meatloaf uh, now with uh, some of the tomato sauce. All right. What you see over here is basically what we're going to use for our meatloaf today. All right. So we have a bunch of eggs. We're actually using five eggs. We have broccoli, we have celery, we have green pepper, we have carrots, we have sweet potato. Right here is uncooked oatmeal, which will absorb a lot of the moisture and keep some of that delicious nutrients and vitamins in, in the meatloaf. We have some brown rice. We have a little white rice that was left over the other day. We're gonna put that in. Beans happen to be terrific. Uh, a lot of the beans have uh, certainly a lot of important vitamins and nutrients. Uh, if you just look on the back of this, you're going to see it's got the vitamin A and vitamin C and iron and calcium and lots of other good things. So beans are good. We try not to put too many cans of beans in here because Georgie tends to get a little gassy if we do. All right. We even have cheese. And cheese is great, actually, because it's got a lot of things. And I'm going to read some of the benefits of cheese. Cheese is a good source of protein all right, for your dog. It also provides vitamins and minerals such as calcium, vitamin A, B complex, vitamins, and essential fatty acids. So cheese is very good, so don't be afraid of putting some cheese in there. Dogs love cheese and uh, he gobbles it up. Okay, we also like, based upon the season, we like to put fruit in. So I love to put apples in. It adds some sweetness and some uh, taste to uh, the meatloaf. Uh, he loves it. Uh, we have some apples and we just got some pears, so we're going to put in a couple of pears as well. We have a Cousinot over here, uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to basically grind everything up. All right, not finely, but almost like a coleslaw. And we're going to put that in one of our big pans that we can get some over here. My assistant will help me here. Okay, so we've got this big stainless steel bowls. Uh, this one is going to be for uh, the meat. We're going to put all our meat in here with the eggs. And then we have uh, a huge bowl over here. 
So we're going to put all the coleslaw that we're going to chop up, all the vegetables and everything in, in this bowl, and then we're going to combine the meat with all the veggies, and then we're going to put them in the meatloaf pans. Okay. So I'm going to take you through a couple of the steps, and then we're going to quick cut to uh, some of the other things that we're doing. We can use two different uh, ways of grinding this up. I like to use this little blade over here in the Cuisinart. It's fast and simple, and it doesn't, if we don't let it go too long, it doesn't chop it up too fine. And then this one is for grating, and we may use this also for the carrots and some of the other veggies. But right now, I'm just going to put this in here. I hope you can see this. Okay. Now, these are too big to put in, obviously, all these things. So we're going to chop up a couple. We're just going to do some sweet potatoes now. I'm going to cut this up into smaller pieces. Like so. And I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so we're going to throw that in here. I'm using the pulsing button so I can actually stop when I want and keep this ground up enough. Now, I want to show you what this looks like here. Can you see how great this is? So that's that's terrific. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw that in this bowl here, and then we're going to continue to do the same to everything else that we have here. Carrots, same story. So I'll just chop that up. As far as how much of everything to put in, use your, your own judgment. I mean, we did four carrots now. Uh, we're going to do like three stalks of celery for this batch. Uh, we have one green pepper. We have a bunch of nice head of uh, broccoli. We got some fresh string beans that we're going to use. So, you know, it's just use your own sense, you know, and um, there's a lot of uh, fruits and vegetables that you could use as well. So we're going to pull this. That's the whole deal. I mean, it's, it's so easy to do. All right, and here's your carrots and your sweet potatoes now. Right. And here's your broccoli. You can see how nice this looks. So this goes in here. You know, you got your orange, your green. Now we're going to throw in some green pepper. The green pepper, when you chop it up, tends to get a little watery. Don't, don't be concerned with that. The juice is good, so it has all the vitamins in it. So we'll throw that in here. Make an investment in a Cousinart. Um, you know, a lot of people have other food choppers or whatever, but I've been using this one for probably seven or eight years now. Uh, obviously, in the first video that we did, and it's great. And I'm going to throw some celery in here also. I just want to chop it up so it's easy for the Cousinart to deal with. seconds to chop everything up so it's not a lot of work you know that's for sure get all this stuff out of here ok 
Okay, now we have string beans also. Everything's been washed, everything is clean already, so we don't have to be concerned. These are nice, they don't have the stems on them. In the summertime when I get stream rings, they all have the stems, they just came from the farm. Uh, these do not, they came in a nice package. So, these are going in here. Stream rings are excellent. I'm going to be mixing things soon and uh, I'm going to be mixing meat with vegetables and I want to keep everything nice and clean. So you can cut up the apples like this and throw them into Cousinot or if you have one of these guys it's even better because it's a core and there you go. Fast and easy, it is the core and this is going to go into my waste bin over here and then at, when this becomes full I grind it up and it goes down in the basement because we practice vermiculture which is I have red wiggler worms that will eat all this stuff and convert it into a rich black worm castings which is the best organic fertilizer you can get for your garden so we, we get loads of uh, terrific worm compost uh, worm castings each year, and we even have to sell some of the excess because we get so much. there. I think now what we can do, uh, we got a pair over here. Let's do this one while we're at it. Let's get this label off here. So we'll cut up. Yeah. I'm going to grind up the beans next. I thought you were going to rinse these quick. I did. Oh, you did. Can you bring them back? Okay. All right, we rinsed the beans out because in the beans, they tend to use some sodium in here uh, when they pack it. So we rinsed it through a con, uh, we rinsed it off through a strainer. I'm going to take this, put this in our bowl now also. three months supply and Georgie is now about 14 pounds he's a little overweight because he's old he's 11 years old now and he doesn't get as much exercise as he used to because we don't take him out as much as he used to because we're in our 70s now but what you want to do is certainly get your dog to exercise take him for walks let him run because this is a very rich food here's our tomatoes so all we do is liquefy this all right put that back in here we're just going to use some for the topping and we're going to use some for the meatloaf itself okay all right, so I think we're done grinding up everything that we had to grind up. Right, pull this out of here. It's good stuff. Oh, there is one other thing that we're going to grind up, and that's the eggs. 
in the beginning, we didn't grind up the eggshells. We just used the egg. But now, after a lot of information that we've got, we decided that the eggshells are not harmful. If anything, they're beneficial because they do have calcium. see in the bottom you're going to see the eggshells little pieces of eggshell so this is okay too so we're going to take that okay guys this weighs a ton this is probably 15 pounds of meat. We have 12 pounds of turkey and probably three or four pounds of chopped meat we're going to put in there. So this is just the turkey. Take a look at how much. It's quite a bit, right? But again, we only want to do this every three months or so, so this is the best way to do it. I'm going to pick out some of the chopped meat. And what I do is I usually take some of the turkey also, mix it with the chopped meat, and we make some meatballs. Uh, and we freeze those away as well, so we're going to do that today. Okay, so we have the small bowl, and we got the big bowl. And what we're going to do now is, I'm going to mix the two meats together. And that's why you want to have the gloves. I'm going to give it a good mix. So you get the chopped meat of that in there. So it has breath will be a little cleaner. You can add some parsley. Again, check on the internet. There's a lot of things you can add to this. This is just to give you a sense of what we do and how we make it. Okay, now, we have my eggs here with the shells. All right, and I'm gonna to start to add some of the other ingredients. Here's the brown rice. some white rice. We're only using this. It's, it's, it's good for the dog. We don't use a lot. I mean, when you consider uh, the fact that we have three months supply, we're adding maybe a cup of rice. We're adding two cups of dried oatmeal, uncooked. Okay, and then we mix again. The whole thing is to try to incorporate all these different ingredients into the meatloaf evenly so that you don't have all the oatmeal in one spot or all the rice in one spot. You know, this is, this is the trick. Let me start adding some of the veggies, we'll add cheese, we'll add all that other good stuff. But since this bowl is getting full already, a little bit at a time, we'll have to probably take some of this out of here. Meatloaf, and you got a lawsuit on your hands. So, you know, my decision was to just make the video, give you guys a guide on what we do, and then let you do it for your dog as well. This is not a money-making operation for us. That's for sure. Now you can see how full this is getting. But I assume most of you will probably make a one month supply. And then as you get into it a little bit more and you understand how to do it and your dog likes it, you'll start making bigger quantities as we do here. So there's no real proportion here in terms of what we're, we're adding to the meatloaf. We're just using some common sense. My wife keeps holding this up to me. <laughs> but again, it takes time to incorporate, you know, pounds and pounds of meat with all those vegetables. So enjoy 
Georgie is blocking already. I think he wants his meatloaf. Either that or the postman came to the door and he's blocking. Take a look at all the articles that I do. I have articles on everything from trade shows to consumer shows, auto shows. We go on cruise ships. We interview the captain of the ship and lots of the senior staff there. And we have over 300 videos on YouTube, so please take a look. Len Rapp, L-E-N-R-A-P-P -P, on YouTube. And uh, subscribe to my channel. There's lots of stuff there as well. Okay, so everything looks pretty good now, uh, as you can see. I think we got everything pretty, pretty well incorporated. We're going to spray the pans. And we have eight of these, and then we're going to put them in the oven. So let me just add the tomato sauce. Georgie, we're going to give you Georgie meatloaf. Relax, buddy. And we're going to keep enough in here so that we can top each meatloaf pan. Instead of using ketchup that has high fructose corn syrup in it, we're going to use our tomato sauce. That was in a 28-ounce can. And we're just going to mix some of this into the meatloaf because, again, it adds healthful vitamins and nutrients and moisture and taste. You ever notice that your dog likes to eat pizza? You know, it's got cheese on it, it's got sauce on it. You know, dogs will eat pretty much anything. We know what we're putting into our Georgie meatloaf, and we know everything is fresh and healthy. I don't trust any of the commercial dog foods. I don't care if it's blue buffalo or green chicken or whatever. If you look at the ingredients, it'll give you some idea of what they're putting into it. And you could use some of those items into your fresh meatloaf. But, you know, a vet once told me, he says, you know, Len, he says, they're going to heat that stuff up to 500 degrees to kill any bacteria or anything that's in that food. He said, and then they're going to extrude it and dry it up and cut it up into tiny little hard pellets. And you're feeding your dog little pellets of who knows what. The other thing is, the fact that it might contain chicken or other healthful ingredients, you don't know where that chicken came from. You don't know what kind of chicken that was. Did it come from China? Did it have antibiotics in it? Did it have hormones in it? You don't know. Okay, so here's one of the, the meatloaf pans. I'm not going to take you through me loading all eight pans, but I'll show you what it looks like here. All right. So here's your meatloaf pan. We're going to take a little of this tomato sauce. We do not use ketchup anymore, guys. No high fructose corn syrup. Don't get nuts. Don't get crazy. Okay. And once we're done, we're going to have eight pans in the oven. At 350 degrees. All right, until the meatloaf is cooked. It generally takes probably about an hour, I guess, in the oven. And I'll have some more information on the video itself. I'm going to time it this time. We do it kind of, we just sense it. We take a look at the meatloaf and make sure that it's cooked. All right. So we're going to cut away now, and we're going to come back once we load this into the oven. And I'll just do a, a little bit of a wrap-up until tomorrow when we start to cut this up and freeze it. Okay? So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, write them down or visit us on our website at ipaimpress.com. My email address is lenrap, that's L-E-N-R-A-P, 43, at gmail.com. Don't drive me crazy, but if you have any legitimate questions, feel free to drop me an email, and I'll try to respond to you. Uh, you can do it on the video itself. It might be easier that way. I do get a notice from YouTube when there's a comment. And please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to us. we got lots and lots of videos. Uh, for pretty much everybody, from balloon festivals to, as I said, cruise ships and uh, great tourist locations and, and lots of other things that we cover. So go check us out. IPAimpress.com is our online magazine. If you're a photographer, journalist, and you'd like to join us at our main site, which is International Press Association, uh, it's internationalpress.org. 
and uh, our members get an opportunity to actually cover real live assignments. They do get our press ID so they can go out as freelancers and get the access that they need uh, to go in and cover some uh, great events. All right, so we're going to say goodbye for now and we're going to come back to you in a short while and show you what this looks like when it comes out of the oven. And then tomorrow we're going to continue the video and move on to the next phase, which is cutting it up and freezing it. Good morning everybody, it's the morning now and we've successfully made eight meatloafs for Georgie and now we're going to cut it up and we're going to freeze it so we're going to go through that process for you. Uh, I weighed this and this one piece over here weighs just a, a little bit over three pounds so they're pretty heavy. They're dense because there's a lot of meat and a lot of good vegetables in here so we're going to cut it up into slices and make daily portions for Georgie. And if we do this right, we should get about 12 slices. So this is what it looks like when you cut it up. And you can see the carrots and the stream beans and all the things that we put in there are in the meatloaf. Now, for the sake of this video, I'm not going to cut all of it. I'll just cut a few and then show you how we wrap it. We have, we use all-purpose dry wax paper, but you can use the wax paper or whatever you've got. And then we fold it, we cut it up into smaller pieces that you see here, so that we can wrap this up just like this. You don't have to wrap it completely, you just don't want them sticking to each other when you put it in the bag and freeze it. So this is what it looks like now. When we take it out of the freezer, we pop this in the microwave to defrost it. Uh, we happen to use, we use these little coated paper plates for Georgie. It's a little easier to deal with. Uh, this way we can throw it out at the end of the day. So what we do is we take a half a piece for the morning and a half a piece at night. And then we just break it up. Now this is out of the refrigerator, it's not out of the freezer, so I, I can break it up here. But I'm going to throw it in the microwave just for a few seconds, just to warm it up. Because it's a little cold here. I'm sure he won't mind either or, but we like to do it the right way. So I'm going to throw this in just for about 10 seconds or so. Okay, so this is what Georgie gets in the morning, and he gets one at night also twice a day. It's one piece. We're going to get 12 pieces out of each meatloaf. And so that's 96 days of food for Georgie. So we've got a, just a bit over three months supply each time we do it. So we do this four times a year. He's set for the whole year with Georgie meatloaf. All right. So basically we're going to get three months out of the eight meatloafs. We get 12 slices times eight is 96 pieces. We give him half in the morning, half at night. He loves it, keeps him happy. Uh, the only thing that Georgie is not getting, which we have to work on a little bit because he's 11 years old now, is a little bit more exercise. It's winter time here in New Jersey, so we don't get a chance to take him out for those long walks and let him run. All right, but Georgie has never been sick a day in his life. We've never taken him to a vet where he's gotten a bad review. So. Uh, I think we attribute most of his health to, obviously, the food that we feed him. We hope that you'll feed your dog, Georgie Meatloaf, and we welcome your replies and your comments on our YouTube video. You can, we're sure that your dog is going to love it as our dog and every dog that has been eating Georgie Meatloaf over the years has. With 320,000 views on our original video, we hope that this 
additional video will give you a little bit more information and answer a lot of the questions that I've been asked over the years. Again, thanks again. You can watch uh, the video and share it with your friends, but you should also go to our website. It's Impress Magazine. That's I-P-A-I-M-P-R-E-S-S dot com and read some more information in the article as well. Thanks again. Give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. We have loads of videos, everything from cruises to uh, Macy's Parade and lots of other exciting and interesting articles and videos. Check it out. And thanks again. Enjoy Georgie Meatloaf.